Hello, we are going to review receivables. A receivable is something that you are expecting, it's some kind of expectation that you're going to receive some kind of asset in return for something you've done. There are a number of receivables and I believe this chapter will cover in good detail a note receivable or accounts receivable. Account receivable is most likely going to be resulted from activities or sales that your organization um, has been have have had more likely trades receivables and those receivable is going to be a legal document maybe possibly in writing that you write and generally is going to have some kind of um, interest rate attached to it accounts receivable are short term usually 30 to 60 days and they are going to be a current asset on your balance sheet a note receivable can be a current one which means under a year or a year or less or it could be long term most likely the biggest difference between a note receivable and accounts receivable is that a note receivable generally is going to be paying interest or you'll be receiving interest on that note um, but most likely um, a note receivable can be short or long term depending on the nature of that contract so it is a formal document It's generally going to be 60 days sometimes it's longer it is most certainly going to be written and and the interest might be very well attached to it but there are other receivables like interest taxes and um, different type of receivables from employees. They're, they're much less likely to be on the balance sheet, but they are most certainly uh, receivables in the terms that we're using here. And again, short term is going to be one year or less. Long term is going to be another uh, over a year. Now, when we have receivables, again, we have to be certain that we consider the possibility that the, that some of our receivables will not be collected, in this case, an uncollectible. And we have to, as accountants, have to ensure that when we submit our balance sheets for other people to look at, what is the net realizable value of that receivable, which in which case we have to consider the possibility that some of our receivables may not come back to us. So. A lot of times the organizations may want to shift that, um, that obligation to a factor, get their money quicker and let someone else take on the responsibility of that um, receivable. That's not always the case, but again, it is something that you need to consider um, when, you, when we're talking about receivables. So sometimes we have to deal with bad debts. And if we are uh, giving credit to our customers, there are some customers that may for some reason not pay us back. And if we have that, if we are going to be conservative, we have to consider the possibility that not 100% of what we're going to be um, expecting will come back to us, in which case we're going to have to deal with an, um, a bad debt expense or uncollectibles. Now, there are methods um, that you can use. A gap method is going to be the allowance method, but the tax method is going to be the direct write-off method. And again, knowing what they are and how they're different and how they're calculated is really the most important thing. The allowance method is going to be matching, using the matching principle, matching the, um, the expense with the revenue. So you're going to be definitely um, very much concerned about the allowance method. And it is most certainly a, a very, very important um, measure of um, of using um, of, of calculating your allowance, calculating what you might not receive uh, from your clients. Direct write off just means when you know it's worthless, that's when you write it off, and that's acceptable for tax purposes, by the way. So, if an account is going to be written off, we're going to um, charge to the allowance account. Now, what does that mean to you? We can say that we have over half a hundred thousand dollars in receivables. And we can even categorize that, meaning um, 90,000 is in the 30 to 60 days and 5,000 is in the 60, 90 days and the other 5,000 is in the over 120 days. You can say the longer that receivable is not paid, the more likely it will be uncollectible and use that as a method for determining whether or not that particular um, receivable will be collected. Again, it's all about judgment and it's all about the organization's ability to ascertain whether or not um, how their receivables behave over time. And they have a good idea um, generally, but it is an estimate. It is not something 100% certain. This is not actually writing off. This is just creating an, an allowance of what we think might be written off to provide a guess as to the net realizable value of our receivables and for some organizations that receivable is pretty large amount on the balance sheet and it's very important to note that well if I'm going to be giving my financial statements to someone to review for purposes of extending a loan they want to know with a good amount of certainty that that receivable balance is something that you can rely on as an asset to you and you will get that money so having the write-offs and having the write-offs um, that are accurately portrayed or accurately reflect your experience is going to be critical. 
So when you write something off, it's, you know, you, you prepare the allowance and you decide that this is going to be what you think is going to actually write, be written off. But then you have to consider, well, what do you actually write off and how to record those transactions? And your textbook goes through a lot of different scenarios on how to record them. And I think it's very important to see that. But the most important thing is how do we, how do we estimate the uncollectible and how do we record it when it actually is a bad debt, when you actually write it off and how it differs from the direct write off method. And I gave you one in method when that was going to be the percentage of AR or accounts receivable, but there's also the percentage of sales. And this is going to be the income statement method. You basically saying the percentage of your sales are going to be uncollectible. If you have a million dollars in sales and you are expecting 1% of that sale to go bad, you're going to be writing or uh, creating an allowance for that 1%. That is going to be the income statement method. The method that I mentioned before, which is, uh, um, and you're going to be basically categorizing what your aging of your receivables are and then determining based on the age of those receivables how much is going to be uncollectible that's going to be called the balance sheet method and basically you're going to be trying to create an entry to determine what your allowance would be and then recording the adjustment very very different ways of doing it in the end which works for your organization is the best way. There's no wrong way in these two methods. They both are acceptable ways to um, estimate what your allowance would be. And again, the receivables method is again, it's just basically what do you think is going to be our receivables is going to be outstanding. The longer you have to wait to get your money, the less likely you're going to get your money back. So using these steps, it gives you an, uh, an idea of how and what I just mentioned, how you um, uh, um, analyze your receivables method and what determines what's going to be your determination. And I have mentioned you have your hundred thousand dollars in your receivables, ninety thousand is going to be in your thirty day column, and then five thousand is going to be in your sixty day column, and the other in your ninety to one hundred twenty days. And generally speaking, the longer it remains outstanding, the more likely it's going to be um, something that you're going to have to deal with and again this is the aging of receivables and again it's a very very sound pr principle because the longer something is not paid is gives you a very good indication of whether or not that person's that organization is going to pay you back and again this is just giving you an idea of what it looks like on how you're at you're determining what your allowance is going to be based on the age of your items your receivables and again, it's just making certain that you know that the receivable method is going to be trying to, uh, you're going to be calculating your ending balance, your balance in your allowance account, not your expense. Because what you're going to be doing is, what is my allowance balance should be? And then what is have I recorded so far? That's going to be your adjustment. So that is very important to know the difference between the two. And here, this little, little um, sheet here gives you a good idea of how they're different and what type of information you're going to have to be collecting and how you're going to present that information and the journal entries that you're going to be required to prepare depending on the method you use. Note receivables again are more longer term sometimes they are most certainly 90 days sometimes they are actually or over a year but they have a legal claim because again you're talking about a written document that you've signed agreement to pay back a certain amount of money over a certain period of time accounts receivable generally is not going to be a written document it's just going to be a trade between you and your clients and it's generally going to be short term it's a promise to pay that's really important and again these are the characteristics of promissory notes and again um, accounts receivable generally does not meet those that criteria and this is just giving you a basic idea of what a promissory note looks like. Again, I would say um, the way it looks is going to be so different. You just this is just giving you some of the key components of what a promissory note would look like, giving you the date, the signature, and all of that. So a note receivable is most certainly is going to have a value of maturity value. What do you have to pay back? What is going to be paid back to you? If you're a holder of a note receivable, you're expecting a certain amount of money back. That's going to be called your maturity value. And again, sometimes organizations can sell those, those um, receivables, but again, it is a note. It is a legal obligation to pay back. Sometimes a note will be dishonored. Someone will know what they won't pay. Now again, you have to make certain that you want to record the interest on that note because note receivables are characteristic for having interest or some kind of um, rate of interest to be paid back to you if they in fact 
are going to, um, this is going to be a note, it's going to have an interest rate tied to it. So as an accountant, you're going to have to record the interest that you're expecting in revenues. And again, they're going to be realizable in cash, most likely in cash. Not all receivables are going to be realized in cash. Sometimes it's, it's realized in some other type of asset. Cash is generally the first on the list, but not always. You can always pay back a receivable in furniture or equipment. But again, it depends on the organization in which your agreement is. But assets are going to be expected, and most likely it's going to be cash. So when you're talking about receivables and particularly accounts receivable, how fast you get your money back is going to be a true sign of liquidity and health and knowing that turnover. And again, the number is not necessarily an indicator of it being a good receivable. It just depends. If your organization has receivables that are generally 60 days and you get paid within 45 days, that's good for you. But if you have receivables that generally are 10 days, 15 days, and someone pays you back in 45 days, that's bad for you. So look at your receivable turnover ratio in light of those types of things so that you can make a, an accurate assessment as to whether or not your return over for your accounts receivable is a good measure and is a reliable measure for you. Day sales and receivables, again, this is the relationship between your sales and your receivables. And again, it does tell you, it gives you quite a bit of information, but the most important thing is accurately interpreting the information that you're calculating and using that as a guide as to the health of your receivables. The older aging, the older receivables are going to be very, very toxic and you're going to have to make a decision to whether or not to write them off completely or increase your reserve for um, your allowance. And again, I thank you very much for listening and I think accounts receivable is going to be a very interesting topic and I'll talk to you in the next video.